guys, welcome back to a new video. We're on our way to pick up the goats. We just left Westlock because we were selling some bunnies and we're on our way to the farm that has the goats. It's been a really nice drive so far. Right? Yep. <laughs> the goats it's two days after going to pick up the <laughs> the new additions and they're still kind of skittish but they're getting there but this is what we have that's Bella she's always been kind of skittish but here this one he's our new buck his name is Sinbad, and then back behind him, we have Rhea. She's shaking a little bit. They are not <laughs> the hugest fans of me yet. And his ears are green because he just got tattooed, so there's that. And then Bella in the front here. So I know what you guys are thinking. <laughs> it's a bit soon after our other buck died to go get a new one, but this opportunity came up. So we made a 12 hour round trip to Alberta to go and get these guys. And I just want to say a big thank you to Amber and her husband from Straight Arrow Farms for letting us purchase these animals. We have one more doling, which she's in the other pet barn right now. We have Sinbad and Rhea and Bella currently in this pen. So we should be expecting babies sometime in March. And the new additions are purebred registered Nigerian dwarf goats. So they are a milking breed. They're the tiniest milking breed there is out there. <laughs> they can average about two to three pounds a day, I believe. But my thinking was that I am still really in love with the dairy life and it's really expensive to start a cow dairy so and I really love goat cheese so what I thought I would do was buy a dairy breed and try to work with the goat milk that I can milk out of the dough once she's been weaned off her kids so one of our workers <laughs> <laughs> who works with us. I was talking to him about how I got a Nigerian dwarf goat for trying goat milk and he said that it was basically the tester version like when you go to Costco or a makeup store and you get those tiny little tester pieces. I have the tester version of milk goats <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. But yeah so they're here. They've been here for two days now. Well a day, I guess. We got back at about 8 o'clock at night, so they've been here for about 36 hours. But yeah, they've been here for about a day and a half, and they're beautiful animals. We're super happy with them, and we're super excited to see what they can produce for us. So yeah, I'm excited for little baby Nigerian dwarf goats in March. So this means... Because I am also expecting a delivery tomorrow, <laughs> I bought a pregnant Bordeaux from in Quebec from 
a breeder, uh, the same breeder as Payette and Shine. So this doe is due in November, so I should be getting some November, December babies depending on when she caught on which heat. And then Maple and Cupid are due at the earliest in February, and then these two does are due at the earliest in March. So in total, we should have five does kidding in the next five or six months, hopefully, if everything goes right. So, it may end up being quite exciting here on the YouTube channel with that many does due. Because <laughs> so far I've only had two does kid, Shine and Payette. And I've had three kids this year, so I'm really excited to see how it goes in the future. And I will be making videos on how it goes with milking Rhea, and I hope that it does go well, and that I can make something that's relatively tasty from the goat milk. So that's my new project. I have decided that I will not be keeping any bunnies uh, for breeding. I'm going to have four bunny pets and my two guinea pigs. So I figured with the time that I'm going to save from all the bunnies that I used to have, I can justify getting a dairy milk goat. I also thought a Nigerian dwarf goat would be the best idea because they're smaller and tend to produce less milk than like a Sonnen or an Alpine or a La Mancha or any of the bigger standard sized breeds. So if I do end up being super busy for whatever reason, I can just leave the kids on her and they can milk her out until she's dry, basically. And then I'm not going to have too much trouble with drying her off because I know she actually, Rhea here, apparently had quads this past season and she was able to feed them all without issue, which is insane for a Nigerian dwarf goat. So I may end up taking back those, should be easier to dry off, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going to see how it goes. I'm really excited for this new project. I am really seriously thinking about going into the dairy goat um, business and obviously with the meat goats. I would really love to have a goat farm because I love goats. I'm ecstatic to have these really wonderful goats and I'm going to have a bit of work with getting them to enjoy having me around, but that's the fun part. So yeah, busy days ahead <laughs> and I'm looking forward to it on the buckling that I needled, this guy, Trailblazer. He's doing a lot better now. He's got a lot more energy. He looks a lot happier. He's eating more vigorously now, so uh, that was the right call. I am really happy that I did some preemptive treatment and that he's doing a lot better now. And Batman's growing. Yes, you. He's looking good. Big shiny goat. And then over here we've got my doe pen. They're all chowing down. And over here we have Samurai. He's also a lot higher energy since I gave him some meds. And then... Maple and Cupid here, and they're also doing pretty good. And then over here, we have Shine and Pioneer. <laughs> and they're also doing really well. And then over there, against the sunset, we have four horses back in the pasture because Juliet made a full recovery from her lameness again. So I decided to put her back and she's doing really well. And I guess we also have Presley back in the barn here and I'm gonna add pumpkin to the barn after, maybe tomorrow. But this lady's in here for embryo flushing again. 
and I know I promised to make a video about that a while ago. Yeah, I did. And I never did it, so that will also be made and should be coming up in the next little while, so I promise to get that out to you guys. So it's a few hours later. I'm in the bunny barn now. It's like 10.40 p.m. <laughs> what we did was make this pen for little Lenora here. So this is... She's one of the other goats that we got on Saturday. And she was kind of freaked out as well. Didn't really want to be around us, but she's calmed down a lot and she's already eating out of my hand. So this little sweetie, she's super cute. We're really happy with her as well. And also got some green ears going on because she got tattooed the other day. So yeah, a really beautiful little goat. And I'm excited to see what she produces as well. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you're cute. You're licking my finger. Good girl. So with the recent reduction of animals, this is kind of what we're left with in here. And we just call this the pet barn. There's just a bunch of bunnies in here. Actually three. And then I have Polly up there. And my guinea pigs are in here. You can't see them because they're in the back corner. And there's a mom with babies in there. There's nobody in here. And uh, I have a bunny named Earl Grey in there. Briar Rose is in here. She's my seven-year-old Holland Lot bunny. And then I have Tea Biscuit in here. And then I have a little black one named Chico in the top one there. One last thing that I'll mention that uh, some people have been bringing up in the comments about my goats because we did end up losing the one. We're pretty sure it was bloat. Um, or pneumonia, but people are asking if we've been deworming our goats, and yes, we have. I don't have a deworming schedule though. I try to worm as needed because there's a lot of old, old uh, studies out there that say you should be putting your goats on a worming schedule, but all of the latest information that is out there that is cr like to credible resources says that you should be worming when needed. So I'm not putting them on a schedule. I have a couple of goats that I've seen, you know, they're not keeping weight. They're kind of a little bit slow. Their coats are kind of dull. So those are the ones that I'm going to be deworming or those are the ones that I have dewormed. And then there are a couple that are super fat, super happy, super energetic. Their coats are shiny and thick and lustrous. So they obviously are not suffering from a worm, like a big worm load, because apparently goats will have a worm load. Like it's normal for them to have that. But obviously a big worm load is not good. And that's what results in the dull coat, the lethargic, and the sort of unable to keep weight. So I worm as needed and no more because it can create dewormer resistance, in which case, if that happens, no dewormer is gonna help you out when you need it because the worms that are in their system are going to be resistant to the dewormer and they won't die. They'll just keep procreating and eventually your goats will die and only the ones that are more resistant to worms will be the ones that live. So some people are okay with that happening. I am not. So I choose to deworm the ones that obviously need it. So that's the way we deworm our goats. So as promised from the last video, I almost forgot actually, I said that I would be giving a shout out to anybody who guessed the breed of goat that we brought home. And I thought more people would get it, but there were two. Since we already have Nigerians and we lost one, <laughs> we had to get the replacement buck Sinbad. 
And so we ended up splurging a little bit and getting two more. But the two people who ended up guessing Nigerian dwarf were Checkers X, who said Nigerian dwarf goats on the way. Yes. <laughs> and the bounty hunter, Nigerian dwarf or an alpine of some sort. Maybe ones that love the white flag. French. Smiley face. So there were a lot of you that guessed uh, alpines and sanans. Quite a few people guessed fainting goats, which I honestly, I love fainting goats. They're technically called myotonic goats. They're so funny. I love when they jump up on stuff and just like kind of fall over. I watch so many YouTube videos of fainting goats. Um, I would love to get some Sanans. Actually, Nubians were also mentioned and some Toggenbergs as well. So. Lots of good guesses. I explained why I thought the Nigerian dwarf goat would be a good first milk goat for me and for what I want and for my needs. So I'm hoping that that works out. And yeah, I think it's time to call it a night. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, please like and subscribe and share with a friend. I'm sure they'd be happy to see some more goat content. So, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>